Welcome everybody to the Terrain Studio. I'm your host, Sean Morris. Today in the Terrain Studio, I have for you something exciting. I have another Back to Basics product. In front of me and on the table, I have the Battle Frame 5000. This is an MDF tile series uh, that I have been using recently for a lot of my projects. The advantages of this product here over the old sort of MDF tiles that I was cutting, the sort of MDF sheets, is that this one here actually gives some elevation as well as some magnetizations to the tiles themselves. It just adds to the flexibility of the build and also the durability and the stability of the table itself. So in front of me here I have one of the tiles. This is a 300, mil, a 300 millimeter tile, so it measures 300 millimeters from one corner to the other and then likewise on the uh, sides as well. So it's a 300 mil square or really close to a 12 inch by 12 inch tile. With each tile, and these are sold separately, sold in groups of four or sold in packs up to 24. Of course, you can purchase more if you want to do a larger table, but for a standard 4x6, you'd be looking at getting 24 tiles. The tiles themselves come in various heights. This one here shown is the 33 mil height. It does come lower at the 16 mil. It comes in the 63 and a 93. The beauty of the system is that all the heights of the tiles and all the different sizes of the tiles all work together. So as you can see there's a variety of holes along here. These are all to accept the various um, magnets that can go in and then each of the uh, frames regardless of size can match up to accept the uh, different tiles. As well some of the neat features of the tile itself are the uh, snap together design, so it's very easy to uh, put this together. Uh, glue is recommended, so you will use glue with the uh, sort of uh, slotted, uh, the peg and slot system here, as well as, as I mentioned, it is magnetized, so you can magnetize the tiles together for added strength, and I'll show you kind of what that looks like in a few minutes here. So I just want to go over what the uh, items or what the pieces are per tile, and this is uh, one tile right here. Uh, there is a few extra magnets here, so you don't get quite as many magnets, but you do get two per side, so it's a total of eight magnets. You get four side pieces. Again, these come in whatever height you order, so this is the 33 mil here. And the 33 millimeter is measured from the base of the, uh, the side to the top of the tile, so the top of the peg here. So you get four of these, one per side, and you also get four backing strips. And these are important because they go in behind these holes, like so and this gives you um, a surface to glue your magnet into. So it's really ingenious and you don't have to worry about the, the uh, magnet popping out and falling to the inside. So it gives you some added surface area to ensure that those, uh, those magnets are adhered properly and aren't going anywhere. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to show you, uh, I'm just going to assemble two sides so you can kind of see how the assembly goes. So what I'm going to do is get this stuff out of the way here. Just going to start with one piece. Okay, so there's a video on uh, on assembling these, so I'm just going to kind of add a little bit to that and sort of give you some of my own uh, sort of recommendations or what I found work. First off, you got to have a good uh, adhesive. So I use my trusty weld bond. That's basically what I use, uh, or the type of glue that I use for all my construction. And when you're um, starting off, it doesn't matter what side you pick, but you want to uh, apply the glue to this piece here as opposed to the actual tile top itself. I recommend you put um, a small bead of glue along the edge. What I usually do is I work from the back side, the side without the etching, and I sort of apply it more to the back side, and there's a reason I do this. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a little bit of glue on that. Just run yourself a nice little bead along those surfaces there. On the tabs themselves, what I do is I put a little bit of glue on just the backside edge of that. There we go. Then what you do is you uh, turn it around, you grab your tile, and you align the slots with the pegs. So they're going to fit in there, and it is a rather snug fit, so these uh, aren't uh, going to slip out. They actually will stay in place even without glue, although I uh, highly recommend that you put that glue in there just because um, it can have a tendency to slide out if there's no glue in place. So as you can see, I've, sl I've slid that into the slots, and you do have some glue squeezed out. That's perfectly fine. 
You probably want to have a paper towel handy, um, but I'm just going to use my finger for now. I'm going to run my finger along to take off that excess glue. And that also allows you to uh, sort of jam that glue into the, into the seam. On the top you have a little bit where you squeeze the pegs in. And then what I recommend is you give a real solid press. Again, getting that glue, oops, sorry, off camera, sort of squeezed in there. And just run your finger along, take that excess glue off. It's pretty straightforward how that works. Now the very first one, I'm going to try to get it. So you can see the tabs do align it pretty straight. Now it does have a little bit of flex here, back and forth. Once you add the next side, that really shears up your 90 degree corner here. As an added um, feature during construction, what I recommend doing is taking some painter's tape or some masking tape and tearing off yourself some small pieces. And what I do is I apply them right at the uh, tab points. And that just helps to one, press it in place and hold it, and two, while assembling, it kind of works as a, as a third hand for you, just ensuring that that piece you put on does not go anywhere. So there we go. So I have that in place. I'm just running my finger along the that excess glue. If you look on the inside, perhaps you can see some of the glue is squeezed out on the inside. I am okay with that. I actually have been running my glue along the inside to put an additional bead along here and then what I do is I just run my finger along almost like you're doing some caulking on a, on a countertop and it just runs it in and it gives that uh, side just the extra hold that you may want to uh, to give it. I'm just going to show you the uh, next side here what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you as I was explaining the snap together so I'm not going to apply glue to this but again you repeat the process just as I explained and then you line up your tabs, slide them in, each one of those, and then you can see in the corner here, see how it's not quite lined up yet? Pull that in, and presto, you got another corner done. And again, with the added tape, you'll pull that little bit together. The light disappears and then you get a solid corner and then you just go along and repeat that with each of the pieces again applying tape at each of the uh, joins is a great idea and in a corner what I recommend doing is taking another piece of tape and at your corner you're going to want to do a wrap around so just wrap that right around the corner to give that edge an added uh, piece of strength and then you're going to set these aside to dry so as you complete each one, set them aside. If you're going to be doing some building right on these, then I recommend you give it a 12 to 24 hour dry time. If you are just going to use them as um, sort of a playing surface and you're going to apply uh, just some modular terrain on top, you probably still want to give it a good six hours, but if you can, give it the half a day at least. And that's just going to ensure that none of your tiles are going to fall apart. Because if you do start adding a lot of weight and you have a weak side, Perhaps you will have some uh, some flex in there and then you make it a uh, edge that's not quite straight. So I tend to avoid that. Just give yourself a 12 hours. So I'm going to set this one aside and I'm going to bring in the camera. One I've already worked on. I did this one probably about three hours ago. So here you go. So this is what the completed tile looks like. All four edges are done. Once again, as I suggested, the tape's been used in all the same places. Inside, that's what the tile looks like. What I wanted to do is uh, just show you the strips and how they go in. So the strips themselves go into back the side pieces. Again, they just cover over the holes. On the back side, you can see that they, they do align, just slips over the edge. There's no exact positioning for these, but you'll want to make sure that each of the holes are covered. It's just slightly longer than the holes, so you do have some glue points. I put a little bit of glue at each end. Obviously, in the larger gaps, I put some glue. And what I do is, after I've positioned it, I put some tape just over the edges, wrap it around, and hold that in place. So again, this one's only been drying three hours, so I don't want to remove the tape, but I will um, just take off one piece just to show you. So if you're using this painter's tape, you pull it off, and as you can see, there's no damage done to the tile. 
nothing's uh, peeling away here. The glue that was here is now clear, it's pressed in, and we have no daylight showing through any of the tiles. Evenly applied, nice straight edges as you can see, and it's a great working surface. It's very lightweight as well, so these tiles are incredibly light, but what I really like is it gives you this vaulted uh, surface, so it's up off the table, so if you have, you know, some dice tins or, you know, a book or something like that, it's not flopping onto your table, you got that little edge. So you put these on your table and then you got this artificial edge, you know, you can rest things against it and they're not spilling onto the tabletop surface at all. What you do next is after you have these applied, you're going to want to take your magnets. Now, if you can see here, it's kind of a little hard to pick up, but there is numbers along the edge. And each of these numbers coincide with uh, different frames. So for this one, we're using the 300. Okay, there's a 300R and a 300L. Uh, just off camera here underneath the tape. So when you're lining up the 300 series, you want to put a magnet here and a magnet here. What you need to do, and I'm sure all of you are familiar with this, when you're lining up magnets, you have to ensure that you have the opposites so that they attract. So if you put a magnet in this way on this tile, you need to make sure you put it in the opposite way on the other tile so that they can join up. Now a couple things I've found is two magnets is more than enough to keep the battle frame together. Not necessary to put uh, magnets on the inside, but what I have noticed is that if you are building a display board or something that is going to be accepting a lot of weight, it is maybe suggested that you do put four magnets per side. And here's the beauty of the system. If you order multiple uh, tiles, you're going to end up with uh, magnets, obviously two per side. That comes with the tiles. But if you have a big table, six by four, you're going to have a lot of edges that are not going to need magnets. So those magnets that you're not using on the outside edges, obviously, you could then place on the inside edges. They give you four magnets per side. It's going to be quite strong, and I'm going to show you how to uh, um, remove the uh, tiles safely. You don't want to go slamming them together. You actually want to peel them apart, or if you do, slide them into one another. So um, just like magnets on models. So that's one suggestion. If you're going to have your frame stay the same way all the time, you don't need those magnets on the outside edge, go ahead and use them on the inside. If you are using the system where you're rotating tiles all the time, then you're probably just going to want to go with the two magnets per side. And there's nothing to say that you can't use these holes for your magnets, or these ones, or these ones, or these ones. Um, that's up to you. But for the 300 series, it's recommended that you go at the corners. That just gives you the greatest uh, amount of, um, of pull. So if you go all the inside edges, you might get a, few, a little bit of flexing here at the corners. So definitely recommend using the outside holes for the 300s. And if you have the magnets or you want to purchase extra magnets, you can maybe go with these two as well. And on my display board, which I'll show you in a few minutes, I've actually, I only have one magnetized edge, so I actually did go with four magnets. That was just a preference of my own. So there you have the 300 uh, series, uh, uh, 300 um, mil tiles. This is the, the 5000 battle frame. 33 mil height, not the 16s. I do have some 16s coming, so I'll maybe do a comparison uh, video to show you those. But uh, great system, I'm only using these now, so I'm done with uh, cutting my own tiles. These come precision machines, so there's no worry about having a tile that's 290 and a tile that's 300. They're all 300, they're perfectly constructed, all the edges match up, all the seams are really, really tight because of the magnets, so that's a real benefit that I've noticed about this. So gone is the worry of, uh, you know, accounting for saw width blades and all, and uh, the um, the measurements that have to go with cutting tiles and you know the lugging from the hardware store all that is gone it's here the magnets have pre uh, predefined holes so everything is kind of done for you it's pretty easy tiles take no time to put together once you've done one it's no problem to replicate the process and uh, you got a great surface even if you only use this to apply modular terrain you got an instant uh, a surface to play on they're stackable and uh, they only take up you know one square foot of space when you uh, pull them all apart and stack them you can also stack them like a bookshelf so books on a bookshelf stack them up and then have your tiles go along the bookshelf like that so uh, there you go that's the battle frame uh, so I'm just gonna pull over to the display board to show you what you can actually do with these and uh, maybe give you some inspiration for what you might want to uh, use your uh, battle frame for so Let's slide this out of the way and pull over the display board. Okay, get the 
this out of the way. Here it comes. So there you go. This is actually the display board that I took to the US Nationals. Uh, it is done on two um, tiles. If you can see right here is the seam that runs across this. The building itself is uh, from Mark at Crescent Root Studios. He was kind enough to send me one over. So I uh, said I'd put it to good use and get it uh, up and used right away. So you're going to notice, like I said, you got that vaulted edge. I just gave it a satin black coat along the edge. Really makes it uh, look nice and clean. The battle frame itself is uh, readily accepts glue and there's no, uh, there's no warping or anything like that. Um, the edges I would still paint just to kind of finish them off. But um, the thickness of the tile itself is only 3 16 of an inch so it's, uh, or 3 mil. It's very, uh, it's very thin but uh, that hasn't created any problems with warping because the sides actually help you to create that flex and accommodate for any, um, any sort of uh, surface uh, bending. So um, I haven't noticed that any of the edges have lifted or anything like that. It's been very, very easy to work with and construct on and uh, I've lugged this across the country three times now and uh, no damage or anything like that. So. I've uh, included the strips along this side just to uh, 